Well, hello, 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 and welcome. Welcome to my channel. This is Myron Hodges, and this is the Sunday School Review. Hey, man, come on in and join me for another wonderful lesson today. I know you're going to be blessed by tuning in today, so let's get into this thing today. Amen? I'm ready. I hope you are, too. Amen? There will never be a day like this again, because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Well, once again, I'd like to say hello to you. I hope you're ready for lesson number nine this week. And it's for April 28th or 24th this week. Our Bible basis for the lesson will be coming out of Psalms 110, verses 1 through 4, and the book of Acts, chapter 22, verses 22, 24, and then 29 through 32. Amen. And the lesson title this week is Peter's Report. Amen. So as always, before we get into this lesson, I'm going to open with prayer. Father God, we thank you once again for allowing you to come before you to teach this lesson, Lord. Lord, help us to trust your word. Give us the ability to believe that your word is true, even when circumstances say differently. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. As always, amen, amen, and amen. All right. So once again, this is lesson number nine. It's called Peter's Report. And we're, once again, we're coming out of the book of Psalms, chapter 110, verses 1 through 4, and then Acts chapter 22, verses 22 through 24, and then 29 through 32. Amen. So the Bible truth, the coming of Jesus was a fulfillment of prophecy. A memory verse, he seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Amen. And that's Acts chapter 2, verse number 31, coming out of the King James Version of the Bible. So let's talk about our lesson aim today. By the end of the lesson, we will discuss the importance of being people of our word. Find comfort in knowing that no matter how tough times tough things may get God will keep his word for our lives and share what we learn about God's faithfulness to encourage others in tough times amen and our background scriptures are Psalms 110 um, Mark chapter 12 verses 35 through 37 and Acts 22 uh, Acts 2 verses 22 through 36 amen uh, life need for the lesson today is sometimes before we can go forward, we, we need to appreciate the past. Amen. And that's what Peter's going to be doing here. He's going to be looking back at some things in the past and it's, it's going to help him reveal, so be able to reveal some things about um, Jesus Christ and what's to come. Amen. So before we just jump into the lesson, I'm going to read um, our Bible reading from the expository. Um, so we have a little bit more substance to this week's lesson. And it reads, in Psalms 110 verses 1 through 4, David's prophecy describes God, the Father, telling his son to sit or rest at his right hand for a time because his enemies, those subdued, are not yet fully under his foot. Amen. Meanwhile, his kingdom is being established and will one day be set up in spite of opposition. His people will voluntarily serve him in holiness as God, who will not take back his word, has promised. When Jesus rules, he will be both a king and a priest like Melchizedek. And we're going to be talking about the Melchizedek today. The, the king of Salem. I mean, he was both king and a priest at the same time. 
So he held that office. Jesus will uh, be doing the same thing when he returns. He will be both a uh, priest and a king. A king and kings and all lords. Like uh, Melchizedek to whom Abraham gave his tithes. When Peter speaks to the Jews, the Jews gathered in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost after they heard him and the other Galilean believers speaking in their various languages. And you'll find that is also in this lesson this week. And um, he refers to David's prophecy in a sermon that focused on two themes. And the first one is his death resulted from the wickedness of Jews who pressed for and hereby participated in his execution and are responsible for his death. And two, God, God ordered these events to take place because as the Messiah, his birth, his life, death, and resurrection were part of God's plan to, to redeem the fallen humanity. Peter reminds many of his listeners that they had seen Jesus perform miracles <clears throat> and had even praised him for his works. Yet, they either took part in or were complicit in his death. Nevertheless, since Jesus is the Christ, God raised him from the dead before his body could decay, as David had prophesied, and as he, Peter, and other disciples had witnessed. Amen. So let's get into this lesson today. This is going to be a wonderful teaching here um, about how Jesus will reign as uh, king and priest, but it'll be a time where he has to sit at the right hand side of the, the Father until so things are completely um, set up so that he, when he reigns, it be um, the people will voluntarily be with him and he won't have opposition. Amen. So once again, our lesson scriptures for this week are Psalms 110 verses 1 through 4, and then Acts chapter 2, verse 22 through 24, and 29 through 32. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the reading of the lesson this week. Amen. So Psalms 110 verse 1 reads, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make my thine enemies thine footstool. Verse 2 reads, The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Verse 3, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. And verse 4 of Psalms 110 reads, the Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. So now let's move down to the book of Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to start with verse number 22. Yea, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Verse 23 reads, Him being delivered by a determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Verse 24, Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Verse 29, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, because it was not possible that he should be, should be taken, so he should be holding of it. Verse 29, Verse 29, men and brethren, let, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his
his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Verse 30, therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with, the, with an oath to him that of the fruit of the loins, of his loins and according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Amen. Verse 31 reads, He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. And for the final verse of the reading today, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Amen. And may the Lord add blessing to the reading today. And I'm excited about doing this lesson. This is going to be a wonderful teaching. Um, I hope that you are ready. I'd like to ask for you to um, have your Bibles out and kind of go through it with me. Um, because it's, you know, it's good to, that you read your Bible as well so that you know that um, what I'm talking about is valid. I'm not just making something up. Amen. So what are our biblical definitions for this lesson this week? I have the first one, and it talks about foreknowledge, a term denoting forethought to be to know beforehand. And the second one is witnesses. And the, both of these uh, definitions are coming out of the Greek this week. And witnesses is, is uh, spectators, but also translates, translates to martyrs. Amen. And for our Bible context for this lesson this week, since we have two themes here coming out of two books, the first one is Psalms, and it is I'm the new song. And for the book of Acts, I'm the giver of the spirit. Amen. So let's get into the reading here. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the first verse here, and then I'm going to tell you what I, how I have the verses summarized. First, we have Psalms, verses 1, uh, 1 through 4, in chapter 110. And I have it titled, Seat at the Right Hand. And then from Acts chapter 22, verses 22 through 24, past revealed and looking back. And that's what Peter's going to be doing. He's going to be looking back. And for the final verses, verses 29 through 32, we're going to be talking about bold witnesses. And then I'll read from the Bible application give you the principal takeaways for the lesson, and then I'll close with the summary. Amen? So let's get into this wonderful teaching here. I'm excited once again about being able to do this lesson. Um, I'd like to ask you to like and share the videos with your friends and family. And if you happen to be tuning in for the first time, by all means, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and become a regular viewer of the channel. Amen? So our verse reads here in verse 1 of chapter 110 of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy enemies thy footstool. So what are we talking about here when we say making our, my enemy, my enemies my footstool? And I have it titled, Seat at the Right Hand. Here we see that the most quoted text in Psalm in Psalms one ten in the New in the New Testament. In the early church, it was regarded as a, the messianic text above all others. This psalm is parallel also to Psalms two, which is also an enthronement or a royal psalm used during the installment ceremony of a new king. Adding the language of this of the oracle is symbolic and ideal because it speaks about the emerging of a of, of, of human political office and the divine sovereignty the promises in verses 1 to 3 merges with and reinforces the immutable oath here that the king will also be a priest this was not the first time for such a dual role but it rather was a customary, it was it was customary since the first priest king, Melchizedek, who was king of Solomon in Abram's time. And you'll find that in Genesis chapter 14. And what was significant was the eternal aspect 
which was the eternal, which was which was clearly would not apply to any other human priest or king. Amen. So what we're talking about here is when Jesus come back, he he's not going to be just a priest. He's going to be the priest and the king, and he's going to be a just ruler, and he will rule um, with fairness and. And, and it will be peace. It will be a time of peace. Amen. So now I want to move down to the next group of verses here. Verses 22 and 24 from the book of Acts chapter 22. And I have it, the past revealed in looking back. In verse 22 it reads, Yea, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, Ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. So we're talking about <clears throat> God's foreknowledge here and, and, and he, how he used um, the wicked scribes and Pharisees because they had corrupt hearts. And he used them to, to, to bring about his plan and his will um, for, for Christ to be our sacrifice. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and read what I have summarized for you, for, that's for this group of verses here. <clears throat> so here we see Peter, reflecting on the past, has its benefits. In Peter's case, it would build God's role in our lives. The apostle Peter revealed that God worked through Jesus. Similarly, God works through us to touch, to touch other lives, other lives, God's full knowledge of, of our trials. God is always with us, helping to work everything for the good. And you'll find this in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. Even the death of his son. God's victory over the enemy. Satan is defeated. Thus, God's victory is sure because Jesus lives. Of Jesus, Peter notes, death could not keep him in his grips. In Acts chapter 2, verse 24 reads, Whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible he should be holding of it. When we look back to the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus, we find hope, strength to live a victorious Christian life. I'm going to read that again. When we look back to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we find hope, strength to live a victorious a Christian life. So let's dig a little bit deeper into these two verses and see what we learn here. First, God's prior will, and then second, God's foreknowledge. Third, Jesus was delivered by God. Four, into wicked hands. Who? Killed him, but God raised him. Seven, revealing his agony. Eight, because death could not contain his deity. Amen. Glory be to God. See, the devil thought he was doing something by using these men, these wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, and he had gotten in their hearts, and their hearts were corrupted. And if you if you go back to when we had the lesson in Luke, um, when the Pharisees had uh, Jesus um, before them at a dinner, 
and it was the man with a, a, a heart issue, a, a heart issue. He had a congenital heart disease, and they tried to set him up by having him to do works on the Sabbath, and um, Jesus healed him. But you know what? As I said back then, and as I say now, if if they would have turned come to Jesus and asked him to heal their hearts, he would have did so because their hearts were wicked. And this is how God was able to use them to bring about his plan. Amen? So, I say that because God is all-knowing and he has foreknowledge and he knows the, our hearts and what, we've, what we're thinking. So, they thought by getting rid of Jesus, he would be silenced and then they, you know, they can continue on with being in, in their positions and titles, but God had another plan, and He was, and He, and His, and His plan was His His only begotten Son, with the pure bloodline. He became a propitiation to save the world of our sins. He came to Israel first, but they rejected Him, so He went to the Gentiles. And thank God for that, because now we, us Gentiles, have been grafted in by faith, like Abraham. Amen. So many books and endless discussions have resulted from these and similar verses about God's predestination and or foreknowledge, which is very, very important with this lesson this week. We're talking about the foreknowledge. John MacArthur, he commented that Jesus was delivered up, ekdutos, meaning betrayed or given over to one's enemies through God's determined counsel, horizo, meaning to define, determine, or the point or appoint. And with God's foreknowledge, it was foreordained. All of this was planned. God already had all foreordained the whole scenario on how he was going to save the world. He was going to save us through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. MacArthur also writes, together, they, in, they, they indicate Jesus was delivered to death because God planned and ordained it from all eternity. So in order to accomplish his purpose, God used evil men without violating their free will and still holding them responsible for their sins. So here MacArthur shows how Peter thus presents the total sovereignty of God alongside the complete responsibility of man. And that is chapter 22 and verse 22 in Luke, which says, And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Amen. So we understand that verses 23 and 24, they go together. And as separating them, divides the single thought here. Many of Jesus, many of the Jews and others rejected Jesus and killed him, but God raised him from the dead. Death could not retain God in the flesh, who was the resurrection and the life. And you'll find that in John chapter 11, verse number 25 and whose resurrection guarantees our own. Amen. So once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't you don't have to taste the sting of death but once and then you'll spend the eternity with the Father. Amen. Glory be to God for the finished work on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for that. Being the propitiation so that we don't have to burn in hell for eternity. He took all the stripes and the pain, took on all of the sickness and disease and the corruption and the hate and, the, you know, just the malice, the wickedness of the heart. He took all of that on and he did it. He didn't have to do it, but he did it for us because he loved this world. He loved us. John chapter 3 says, in verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Amen. So i like to talk now about being a bold witness in the final verses, verses 29 through 32. Amen. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day, therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn an oath to him that the fruits of his loins according, according to the flesh, he would rise up Christ to sit on his, on his throne. He seen this before he spake of the resurrection of Christ. <coughs> oh, bless him. That his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath raised up, where, whereof we all are witnesses. Amen. So let's talk about being a bold witness today. So later in Acts, the Apostle Peter reminds his listeners, we are witnesses. And you'll find that in Acts chapter 3, verse number 15. The significance was not lost on those who had seen him deny Jesus three times, which you'll find in Matthew chapter 26, verses 31 through 35, and then 69 through 75. Peter vowed one, one thing, but he did not keep his word. So he didn't keep his word. However, as we enter our text on the day of Pentecost, we see that Peter received a new focus on the future. Strengthened by the Holy Spirit, he was able to speak boldly and embrace, embrace the legacy he received as a witness. Amen. And you'll find that in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. Amen. Glory be to God. So we know that he he told Christ, oh, I'll be with you. But he, and Christ said that by the time the crack throws three times, you'll, you'll deny me three times. And he did. And he this is how he reflected back. Oh, this is, you know, we're talking about um, reflecting here on things and to, so that you can move forward. And this was Peter's report. Amen. So let's talk about our Bible application of this lesson this week. People receive financial inheritances and spend them quickly when they don't understand the purpose of that inheritance and the sacrifice it took to ensure it. Similarly, the news is rife with reports of Christians who devalued their spiritual heritage in pursuit of money, fame, even drugs, or other elusive riches promised by the world. What are practical ways we can help others see the value of protecting their spiritual legacy for future generations. So we see that Peter had become a man who kept his word now. So we should begin each day, this week, asking for God's guidance to help you to only make those commitments he wants you to make. Keep track of the promises you make and the ones you break. Why was, this, why was it easy or difficult for you to keep your word? That's called taking personal inventory of yourself. What did you discover about yourself? And finally, what did you find out about God? What did you discover about God? Amen. What a powerful little reading there from the Bible application. Amen. So let's talk about our principal takeaways for this lesson this week. The first one is God promised to redeem for the fallen the fallen humanity. And prophets have told of it. Second, 
God always keeps his promises. He always keeps his promises. And last, believers should boldly proclaim God's promises. As evidence of God's holiness, number one. And second, because they bring hope to the world. I'm going to read that again. Believers should boldly proclaim God's promises as evidence of God's holiness because they bring hope to the world. Amen. We never know who's watching us, so that's why we need to be proclaiming God's word and his promises. So before I read from the summary, I'd like to ask you to join me next week for lesson number 10, Worthy is the Lamb. And it's coming out of uh, the book of Revelations next week. And we'll be just doing one chapter uh, next week. It'll be coming out of chapter 5, and we'll be doing verses 6 through 13. Amen? So once again, I'd like to ask you to come on in and join me next week again for another teaching. Amen? God promised David that one of his offspring would be the heir to an eternal throne. And David prophesied that the body of the coming king would never decay in death. Those who heard Peter know these things and had witnessed the miracles of Jesus perform, but allowed or participated in his crucifixion. These apparently tragic events unfolded because God intended for them to. And the disciples witnessed their fulfillment when God raised Jesus from the grave with a body unaffected by death. Amen. Glory be to God. So I started teaching for this week. This was a blessed and wonderful teaching. I hope that you got something out of it today. And as always, I'd like to ask you to share with your friends and family. Leave a like and a comment for me so that I can respond back to you. And as always, I'd like to say to you, God bless you and God's love to you. And have a blessed week. Amen.